Hey guys, I'm Esther and I'm back for another sewing tutorial with Lowland Kits. In this video, I will talk you through step by step how to sew up the summer bodysuit or cami. This is it here. How cute. And I sewed up these little play shorts in a separate tutorial that you can find also on the Lowland Kids um, channel to wear, well not for me to wear, for my bub to wear as a cute little matching set. There are a few options with this cami or bodysuit. So for starters, you can either make a top um, or you can make a bodysuit with the little onesie fastening down the bottom. I chose to do the cami, um, like I said, because I made the shorts to go with it. And you can also do a placket, so with the bit buttons, so with the buttons down the front. So there are lots of options that you can pick and choose. I was a bit hesitant doing this pattern because there is binding. So this finish across the top and also for the straps, which can be a little tricky if you're a beginner sewer. So I'll try to talk you through um, really slowly, really clearly how to do that um, because the finish is worth it. It's so neat and it's very doable, especially if you don't have an overlocker or a cover stitch or a binding attachment. Um, I just used my normal uh, domestic sewing machine, which is the regular sewing machine that most people have at home. In sewing up this top, all I used was the straight stitch and a twin needle. Those are the only two things. And instead of the twin needle, if you don't have a twin needle, you can do a zigzag. If you need some inspo, oh gosh, I did something. I think I clicked purchase. Um, <laughs> there's so many cute, cute, cute pics on the Lowland Kids site. So go and have a look if you're not sure which style you'd like to choose. So much inspiration there, as well as on the Lowland Kids Instagram. So jump on there if you're not sure which style you want to do um, and mix and match and pick something that you are looking forward to sewing up. This is a stretch pattern. Ooh, I was like, can you do it in a non-stretch fabric? You could do it if you chose a size that's bigger, I believe, but the pattern is designed for stretch fabrics. So like a simple t-shirt fabric, um, or something with elastane in it. So having said all that, let's get started. When you purchase the pattern from Lowland, you'll get sent all this information, which is super helpful if you're a beginner sewer. I'm using this super cute cotton jersey fabric, but you can use anything that has stretch to it. So here I've cut out my pieces. I have the front piece, the back piece. I have a long strip of binding and the ruffle that I'm going to add to the hem. You could very easily add some length to this ruffle and turn it into a dress pattern. The instructions will tell you how long to cut your binding pieces, but it's totally up to you if you would prefer to leave your binding piece all in one long strip and then trim it after sewing it. Sometimes binding can be a little bit temperamental depending on how much stretch is in your fabric, so keeping it long will just minimize that risk of having it too short or even stuffing it up later on, so totally up to you. Here I'm pinning my front neck binding piece to the front neck and I'm going to sew that straight across. I think the seam allowance is half an inch, which is about 12 millimeters. Since we're sewing with stretchy fabric, you need to use a stretch needle, otherwise known as a ballpoint needle, so that you don't punch little holes into your fabric. You can do a few test runs to check that everything is running smoothly with your machine and then we're just going to use the regular straight stitch to sew straight across that neck. Do the same process to attach the back neck binding piece to the back neck as well. This is what the neck binding should look like now that it's attached. I did experiment with attaching it with the wrong side down because I've heard that you can get a nice neat finish that way. But having had a play, I would highly recommend just following the instructions that come with the pattern and going right sides together. To sew the binding neatly, we first need to press it into place. So just use a regular iron. Press the seam allowance towards the binding, then fold the binding so that it almost meets the edge of that seam allowance. Press that down and then fold the binding again so that it just covers that line of stitching that we did previously. Once it's pressed, it should look like this and we should easily be able to use a straight stitch and sew down that edge to keep the binding down. Once it's sewn, it should look like this on the front, nice and neat. And then on the back, it should actually catch the other side of the binding. You can use as many pins as you need to keep that back part in place as you sew. We do have to take a bit more care when sewing the straps though. So we're first going to find the midpoint of the shoulder strap binding. 
for the size that I was sewing, this was nine centimeters. Then divide that measurement by two. So for me, that was four and a half centimeters, which means that I'm then going to put markings on my strap at four and a half centimeters on either side of the midpoint of the strap. I'll repeat that process for the other strap. And then we're going to use those markings to know where to place our front and back pieces. With the right sides together, we can align the left pin with the back piece and then the right pin with the front piece. Then the ends of the binding pieces should go all the way to the underarm. Pin or clip those in place and it should look like this, ready to sew. We'll use the same method as we did before for the binding, except that there'll be that gap in between the front and back pieces which will form the strap. So use the same process, um, pressing your binding into place and pinning it in place before we do that edge stitch which will neaten everything up. You might have to go nice and slow like I did here because the binding's on a curve so it can be a little bit tricky to catch the binding on the underside. So just take it nice and slow. And that's the last of the binding part done and the straps should look like this. So the top part of the cami is pretty much complete. We just need to sew up those side seams now. So pop the right sides together and then sew just straight down each side. If you have a serger or an overlocker, you can definitely use that to sew down these sides, but I just used a straight stitch. To get rid of that bulk, I'm going to push the seam allowance towards the back of the top and use just a couple of stitches to hold that in place. It's not very noticeable and it should look like this. To finish off my cami, I've chosen to do a little peplum or a little frill on the hem. So I'm going to sew two rows of stitching at the very top of that peplum piece. But before I do that, I'm going to join the ends of the peplum piece. So that short edge, um, just with a straight stitch so that the peplum piece becomes one continuous loop. I'm going to turn the machine up to the longest stitch length, which is about four or five on most machines so that it's a very wide stitch. And then I'm going to sew two lines of that right near the edge of the fabric. It should end up looking like this and you can pull the top threads together to create the gathering. I divided that piece into four and marked those four points with pins so that I could easily align it to the top. That way, when I do the gathering, it can come out nice and even. You don't want heaps of gathering in one spot and then a little bit of gathering in other spots. Ideally, you'd like it to be nice and even all the way around the top. The right sides should be together and then it's ready to sew. I use a straight stitch here, but I would actually recommend using a zigzag because that amount of stretch in the top goes around the body and ideally you want that to be able to stretch over your bum. Once you flip it out the right way, it should look like this. And if you have an overlocker or a serger, you can easily go around that edge to neaten it up. But if you don't, it's not a big deal. The last thing to do is the hem. I think the seam allowance is usually two and a half centimeters or one inch. So you can fold that up with a, um, use your measuring tape to measure it, uh, pin it in place and then press it down because I think you always get a much better result when you press your hem before sewing it. I'm going to change my needle to a twin needle to finish the hem. You do need to use a stretch stitch here, so either a cover stitch machine if you have that, or a zigzag, or of course the twin needle like I'm using. To set up a twin needle, you obviously need the twin needle part, which is quite standard across most sewing machines, so you can simply purchase that um, quite inexpensively. Then you pop it in instead of a regular needle and you actually thread up the machine as if you were just doing one needle except that you've got two spools of thread um, going all the way through the machine coming down to where the needles are and then one thread obviously goes to the left needle and the other thread goes to the right. The threads can get tangled from time to time so I found that using a really good quality thread makes a big difference. Make sure you do lots of test runs to get the hang of it. Um, and then once you get going, it should be very easy. You just sew as if you were sewing a straight stitch. It should look like this on the right side and like this on the wrong side. Admittedly, I'm not 100% happy with the tension on the back of my twin needle. I think I need to play around with it a bit more, but I feel like that's gonna take a big investment of time. So I need to do that when I'm nice and patient and in a really good headspace. Apart from that, the top is complete and I'm so happy with how it turned out.
I was so pleased with how this little cami turned out. It's so, so cute. And like I said, so many options and I can't wait to sew up a different version because now that I've done it, I know that it's doable, not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, so I hope that you also had success in sewing up yours. If you had a go, we would love to see how yours turned out. Um, tag us at Lowland Kids on Instagram and you can hashtag as well, I believe. And if you're looking for a sewing community, there are a couple of Lowland Kids Facebook groups. So you can jump on there, people who can help you out with questions um, if you get stuck. Otherwise, leave a comment below and we will do our best to get back to you if anything wasn't clear or if you get stuck on anything in this sew up. I'll see you in another video soon.